thrilled to be joined today by um, a much better looking version of Joe Schmidt, I must say. You know, it's a it's a it's a significant improvement that Michael Burr's here. Don't, uh, Michael, don't you agree? I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you finally have somebody in this seat with a little bit of height and stature <laughs> after Joe's departure. Um, but I've asked him to do so many things over the years. I'm happy to fill in for him here. Yeah, well, I appreciate you doing it. Um, and that is a big part of your role with the team, right? I mean, it's um, all the requests to talk to the players come through you. Yeah, I, I joke that uh, at times I'm not the most popular guy in the locker room because when, when I come to see them, they, they gener- I generally come with bad news. But our guys are a really good group, and they've been prof- professional since I've been in this role. And they understand what I'm doing and trying to help them, and, and uh, they're a great group to work with. To talk a little bit about the training that's involved, the, the the things we do to help the the guys be effective when they're representing us in the media. Yeah, I mean it's um you know it's something that that I take great pride in since I've been here um, is working with the young guys and getting to see them develop. Um, you know, you talk about development in a in a player on the field and how important that is, but you know when you're in the bright lights and the big stage of Notre Dame, you have to prepare them in other areas as well, and and one of those is is speak in with the media and uh you know little things here and there little comments here and there we'll we'll talk even if it's just walking down the hall um i'm in the room with them when they're speaking as we're heading back i'll say some things that i thought worked really well some things that didn't and it's just more than anything is just getting them comfortable in that setting um a lot of guys get here as great players and they feel like hey i can handle the media i've done it in high school but until you get here it's uh it's a totally different deal and I think that's the first thing you just is just uh, ease any reservations they have. I think when they're comfortable in that setting, then they can let their personality out and they'll do just fine. Well, part of the fruits of your labor, I think, were demonstrated very effectively in the Showtime series where America got some insights into our guys that I, I was thrilled we were able to provide. What, what were your takeaways from the show? I'm just, I was amazed by um, the willingness and participation of our players and coaches. Um, Understanding it was a, it was new, something never done before. And man, our players uh, never really missed a beat. We we joked that some of us uh, older folks, including myself, don't always do as well with change as the young kids did. And man, they were, from the day they started until the day they finished, they were they understood what we were trying to do with that program, and then, man, they were really, really good. And I was just so gr- glad to allow others to see something that we're, you know, standing on the mountaintop yelling all the time about how special our guys are and how unique of a place this is. Yeah, I hope um, I hope our listeners or viewers have been able to see all the episodes. But if you only see one, see the last one. Yep. Because yep. it is a... Uh, pretty emotional for me, but a, a great, a great insight into into our team and what makes them special. But speaking of that uh, that week, um, one of the reasons I was thrilled to have you on today is it makes sense to spend a little time reflecting yep. on on Notre Dame's latest uh, latest bowl trip, uh, the end of a very successful season, eighth ranked in the country by the C- CFP, and an opportunity to play a very good Ohio State team out in the Fiesta Bowl. What are your major takeaways from the game? You know, I think my biggest takeaway um, is just, you know, not that group, this team, all year. Um, you know, we talked about their ability to endure whatever was in front of them. And they went through so much as a group. And here at the bowl trip, um, for them to, to go through some hardship again and just to continue to keep playing, just continuing to fight. Um, you know, we, I was just thinking about it. I mean, the stories you could single out so many guys, but, um, Jared Grace, the two guys in front of him go down in the game. Jared Grace plays a position in which he had not played in a game all season. Maybe took 10 reps at that position in practice. And here he is playing against Ohio state. Um, you know, seeing a guy, um, you know, you know, Jerron Jones not play a snap all year. And here he comes in and plays in the bowl game and is in on a big play with Joe on that interception. Um, things like that where time and time again all year, a guy went down and the next guy didn't blink and just jumped right in and gave everything he had. And that, I know that doesn't show up on paper, but, you know, 15, 20, 30 years from now, that group and, and this program and that team can, 
hold their head high for how they handled themselves in a very difficult season. I couldn't agree more. I thought it was I thought it was among the most special games I've been involved in in my eight years for exactly yeah. the reasons you say. You know, I've had people say things like, "Oh, he struggled to get him off the field on third down," and you know, he, you know, he couldn't stop him at critical times. And I'm saying, yeah, but you know, you got to consider the circumstances under which they were playing. I mean, yep. you're missing your starting corner, your starting safety, none of your interior linemen. As you're missing one, um, <laughs> you, you know, you've got you got one, as you say, that yep. that 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 had about 10 practice reps or days, 10, 10, 10 to 12. Sheldon has got one foot, and he's on IVs. When he came in at halftime, he plopped down on the training table, and they hook him up to another yeah. IV, uh, missing two linebackers during the game, including the best linebacker in the country. I mean, the list goes on and on, but as you say, the resolve the team showed, it just never missed a beat in terms of, let's go, you know, yeah. let's, let, let's fight. And, you know, You've heard all this year, especially, you know, the next man in. And the reality was on Friday, it was not just the next man in. It was the next man in's man in. Yeah. You know, uh, Nick Watkins at corner was the stand-in for Devin Butler, who was the stand-in for Kavari, you know, for Kavari Russell. Um, And the same thing on the defensive line. And we talked about Jarrett. And you know what? Nick Watkins played really well. Yeah. Um, And that's just when you talk about player development and you talk about um, the kind of team and depth you need to compete at that level. If nothing else, that's what this season showed. Um, is there a little what if, man? It would have been great if we had. Would you like to have taken on Ohio State with you for a full arsenal? Absolutely. But I think there's some truth to this season was built on when guys went down, guys came in, and that's what made this group so special. Yeah, yeah, depth and depth and player development, I do think, were the highlights of this year. I mean, the, the season spoke to both of those things. Um, you know, really talented people waiting to come in when they get their chance who have been developed uh, developed effectively uh, while, while here. Of course, for all of us, both who were there and watching on television, the major impression of the game will be and always remain Jalen. Yeah, uh, the ultimate untimely uh, injury. Um, as we're doing this show, it's the day he's scheduled for surgery uh, down in Dallas, and I know everyone involved wishes him well. Um, we're doing everything we can to continue to support him, and uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I if 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 I've ever met a guy who I think can deal with a cha- the challenge he faces him and come out. Uh, in the best possible place. It'll be Jalen. Absolutely. Um, You know, I got to spend some time with him back in South Bend on Saturday and then again on Tuesday. And, you know, I I found my, I found him almost helping me with it more than me helping him. And I just wanted to go see him and pass along my thoughts and whatever I can do for him. And the mentality of the kid is he's, he's here telling you he's fine. He's okay. You know, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, maybe I'm not as okay as he is. Um, but that's that's what's going to get him through this. Um, he realizes that things happen for a reason, and ultimately he'll find out this reason, um, and he'll battle it just like he did everything else, just like he did on the sideline when he was unavailable to play. He was not going to remain in the locker room. He was going to get out there, and however he could help the team, he was going to try to help the team. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm at a little disadvantage to comment on the game because I didn't see it. I was in the locker room with Jalen, and then, but, but that was his focus. Um, yep. He he was, uh, you know, he was resolved. He was resolute, but it was I need to get back out there. Um, yep. And so we, we 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 got him in a position where he could get back out there. But uh, spoke spoke volumes about uh, about the kind of young man he is, and I'm I couldn't be more optimistic about. You know, again, that uh, that if anyone can can navigate this, it's him. And I and I and I know a couple of years from now we'll be celebrating him as a yep. very successful NFL player. Absolutely, have uh, have no doubt in that whatsoever. No doubt whatsoever. Now it's also the time of year where a number of guys on the team make make decisions, important decisions of, uh, about their future. Uh, recap those for us, if you can keep them all yeah. all straight. Um, you know, the the first one, CJ Procise. Um, you know, decided to to Galaire for the NFL draft, and I, you know, in CJ's CJ's case is is a perfect example to the kind of player development we talk about um, with this program. CJ 
Guy was recruited as a defensive back, a safety. They transitioned him to wide receiver, became a very productive wide receiver, transitioned to running back, and all he does in his first season as running back is run for 1,000 yards. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I think that uh, at the NFL level, they'll see that versatility, his, his ability to come out of the backfield and catch the football. And, uh, you know, ultimately he's in a bit of a diff- different situation than the other guys in the sense that as a senior or four-year player, um, you know, he'll easily attain that degree. And I, I think CJ has the – he's so young. You know, you talk about running backs and tread on the tires. I mean, he's, it's not like he's been knocked around for a couple of years. So right. um, real good for him. And Will Fuller, I mean, I don't know that I could ever think of a player I'm going to miss more just watching just so explosive and exciting uh, to watch. You know, every time he caught the football, you just expected him to go the distance. Yeah. Um, but another example of a development guy, his first year he has six catches. Um, at that point was just a guy that could run straight down the field, and he ends up, you know, over his last two years with 29 touchdown passes, the most in college football over those two-year span, you know, over 2,400 yards in those two years. So really, really special player that uh, I think at the next level will we'll continue that development. Kavari Russell, who is a, sp- a special guy to all of us for, you know, the, the challenge he, he uh, accepted coming back to Notre Dame, and he never uh, backed away from it. And he's a really young player when you think about it in terms of the amount of time that he's played. Um, and another developmental guy came in as a running back, transitioned uh, to corner, and that's a staple of this program is – We'll find a way to get you on the field and make you a good football player. Right, right. So um, really happy for those guys, and uh, I wish them the best. Would I like them back <laughs> with the gold helmet? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no. And, of course, uh, a number of guys who have used up their eligibility yep. are going to have uh, great opportunities ahead of them with Ronnie and, and Sheldon and others. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a deep list. Interestingly, uh, you know, you're talking about youth. One of them, Romeo Aquara. I know. That's about as young as you get going into uh, this opportunity. It, it's, and, he's going to be in an NFL – he's going to be at an NFL uh, OTA this summer at 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, he's played four years of college. He'll turn 21 and I believe it's June. So, remarkable. And he – talk about a guy that's developing. He intrigues me. You know, when the coaches talk about a guy in the NFL, they're going to get a kid that's still learning the yeah. football, let alone the position. He's got a really bright future. Yeah, Some team's going to get, a, get a, a great opportunity there. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. in and pin, pinch hitting for the legendary Joe Schmidt. Uh, we, I don't I think we gave you billing on the show like Joe gets, but, you know, know, okay. that, know that you're in it's an okay. honored spot, and I'll tell Joe that you knocked it out of the park. I, I, I appreciate that very much. It's the, it's the least I can do for uh, – Yeah, the legend that is Joe Schmidt. (laughs) Thanks, Michael. We'll be back in a minute.